morning. My name is William Gustavo Gonzerla. Um, I'm chemical engineering and current I'm PhD student in food engineering at the University of Campinas. Uh, I presented myself in the beginning of the of this conference, but I worked with nanotechnology since 2015, uh, with many studies related to the production of nanoparticle nanocapsules, but always aiming to produce new nanomaterials for food conservation. So this is the um, uh, and this is the, le the lecture which uh, which I will talk here. So the my lecture is entitled "A Perspective Approach in the Production of Nano." the production of innovative nanocomposite packaging for, for food conservation. Uh, starting with uh, an introduction, as everyone here says a bit about nanotechnology with many applications area, uh, the first question that our research group know uh, and do that is related to the, the time of nanotechnology. So we needed to elucidate if the nanotechnology is a new science. I believe that it's not because there are some studies in the literature that describe that the first nanomaterial was produced in fourth century Roman, so a long, a long time ago. And today, uh, before many, studi many studies, we know that uh, the Lycurgus cup, and I call it as Lycurgus cups, that it was produced from gold and silver nanoparticles and do it to a, an exact concentration that we can obtain uh, two different colors. Uh, and this is a phenomenon, a phenomenon caused by the presence of nanomaterials. So, nanotechnology, it's not a new science. Today, we have uh, many studies and many applications of different nanomaterials né, in different fields of nanotechnology, né, uh, as nanotechnology, as mechanical engineering, medical uh, engineering, environment sciences. Uh, and based on this, we needed to to study to promote an industrial application of this, not just in lab scale. Focusing on food engineering, that, which is the research area that I will present, we needed to know the state of art of this technique. So how is the lab production? That, what is the material which we are producing? The availability, the, the economic assessment of, of the production and the disposal of the residues generated during the synthesis. Uh, and based on this, uh, we will have some uh, we have some problematics related to related uh, to the production of nanomaterials. And based on these problematics, uh, we we can elucidate uh, some brokenness and then uh, propose new solutions uh, uh, for uh, based on them. So uh, our our problematic, which I elucidate here in, uh, is related mainly. Uh, is related with food conservation. Né? Food conservation, use of synthetic additives in the food formulation, shelf life of these products, uh, the use of petroleum-based as food packaging, uh, which occurred in correct final disposition. So today we will talk uh, in this presentation about uh, uh, this topic. So uh, when we are talking about the production of nanocomposite packaging, we needed to elucidate uh, the development, optimization, and the laboratory of production of these materials. Uh, but we needed to imagine that these materials, that these innovative nanomaterials, need an application. So, and our application is focusing for food conservation. So, we will produce nanomaterials for food conservation. And during all my presentation, I will talk. Uh, aiming an industrial application because we needed to do all of this process in lab scale but we needed to imagine that one day in a recent time uh, this process will be scaling up for the industrial applicability and for the real applicability by the industry so these five topics i will talk today now starting with the food packaging the production of composites and uh, the production of uh, uh, then, uh, inside in the nanotechnology, the production of nano, nanocapsules, nanospheres, nanoparticles, and then finally to elucidate uh, how can we produce these innovative nanocomposites uh, which we are talking. So, uh, we needed to understand the, the importance of a food packaging for the food conservation. Uh, if we take an example of a product with high lipid content, this product contains 
uh, and a high amount of unsaturated fatty acids. And due to the presence of this unsaturated fatty acid during the shelf life, né, occur a reaction which we call as lipid oxi oxidation. A lipid oxidation is not a favorable reaction for the conservation and then causes many changes in the sensorial ac acceptance of the food, né, mainly included with the color, color, other color and flavor, né, decreasing this acceptance during the shelf life. This is a, a big problem to the food industry because the, the food needs to find a solution uh, to avoid the, the lipid oxidation reactions. And today, in mostly countries around the world, the food industry uses food additives, but not just food additives, uses synthetic food additives, such as BHA and B83. These synthetic additives are positive for the food conservation, and then they avoid the lipid oxidation reactions, increasing the shelf life uh, of uh, products with high lipid content. However, this is a problem because there are many, many, many studies that comprovate the use of synthetic food additives and especially the consumption by us of this, of this conservation né, are related with many problems, né, including autoimmune disease, diabetes, mutation of DNA, RNA, uh, the decrease of some enzymes responsible for many biological processes. And based on these, né, as, as scientists, as scientists, researchers, we needed to find a new way to substitute the use of these uh, synthetic food additives. And based on our knowledge, we conducted many studies with bioactive compounds, as elucidated here in by another lectures in this conference. And uh, we know, for example, that the bioactive compounds present antioxidant capacity. And this capacity is really important uh, and we needed to consider it when we are trying to substitute a new food addict. Uh, the bioactive components basically are the phytochemicals presented in a plant extract. We know that this phytochemical acts as a, a synthetic, or, or, in better words, these phytochemicals can substitute the use of, of uh, synthetic, synthetic food additives, uh, positively comprobated. And we know that the, we can use these phytochemicals to produce nanomaterials. So we can produce nanocapsules, nanospheres, apply, uh, use these phytochemicals to, to a reduction, you know, for example, in the, in the biosynthesis road for the production of silver, zinc, nanoparticles. But we know, we don't know that these, if these nanoparticles, we don't know if these nanoparticles can act as conservative. So, as this is a recent research area, we do not have a, we do not have a conclusion of this. So, uh, again, we can put the packaging. Né? Uh, so, we need to study if, if nanoparticles can substitute the use of uh, synthetic food additives in the food formulation. However, for uh, uh, the use of food packaging by the food industry currently, the materials used is not biodegradable. So this, the plastics mostly used are from conventional sources, from petroleum-based plastics. And then after they use, né, after they use, these plastics are end up in a non-environment uh, places. Né? And even the ocean affecting né, many uh, environment sections around the world. This is a topic that I believe that everyone uh, have the knowledge to, to opine about, but we needed to find a solution for these petroleum-based plastics used by the food agency. And the solution, né, one of the solutions, né, can be the use of biodegradable packaging, because this type of material suffer the natural process of biodegradation, uh, such as the solar, the, the photodegradation, chemical degradation, and the biological degradation, and the use of microorganisms to degrade. If you have a material 100% biodegradable, uh, and these materials present good properties, we can apply this material as a solution for the substitution of petroleum-based pack packaging in the food industry. On the other hand, uh, a packaging 100% biodegradable produced with uh, macromolecules, né, for example, produced with uh, starch, pectin, gelatin, present terrible mechanical properties and physical chemical properties. 
and we need to improve these properties. So we needed to produce a biodegradable packaging using biological macromolecules uh, with good mechanical properties. So there are many solutions for, for, for this fact. And the first one, it's the use of blend. Uh, the, the, use, the use of blend you know, can be a perspective uh, for the improvement of this, of this physical chemical properties. And what is the blend? It's, for example, to produce a material with two macromolecules instead of one. So you can use starch and pectin, starch and gelatin, gelatin and pectin, uh, blend these materials, and then you produce. In a nanoscale uh, knowledge, we can produce nanocomposite, we can functionalize a blend, funct functionalize a composite, né? With, nano, uh, with nanocapsules, with nanoparticles, and then we will produce a nanocomposite, and this nanocomposite will present uh, better physical chemical properties né, due to the principles of nanotechnology in this field. So, talking about uh, uh, nano encapsulation, that is a technique to produce uh, nanocomposites, uh, there are many techniques described in, in the literature, né, such as nano precipitation, complex conservation, emulsion, use of, of supercritical technology. Uh, and all of these techniques can be applied for the production of nanocapsules, nanospheres, and, and many other nanomaterials. That, this is a basically representation of uh, a, a nanocapsule né, with the whole material that is our biological macromolecule. So you can use a, you can use a, a protein, a lipid for the production of a nanocapsule. And then here you have your whole material. And inside of this capsule, this is the core material, is active compound. So you can put inside your nanoparticles uh, you can put an active compound, and this active compound is a phytochemical, né, which will be used to substitute the use of synthetic food additives. So, this is the aim né, of producing nanocapsules, né, uh, to use a nanoscale, and be a material for uh, functionalization and an active material né, with antioxidant and antimicrobial properties and many others. So, and here there is a, a representation of different types of nanocapsules, nanospheres, hydrogels, all in nanoscales that it is possible to produce. And everyone needs an acute method for the production, and every nanomaterial presented here presents an application. On the other hand, now we can use the phytochemicals to produce silver nanoparticles that as elucidated here in. We know that the silver nanoparticle is a strong antimicrobial agent. And this is a positive factor for a food application because the food materials suffer many microbiological reactions and then we need uh, an additive with an antimicrobial property. Well, the, the synthesis method of these silver nanoparticles affects directly the toxicity and then the applicability. And how we are trying to apply this material for food, né, we do not desire a toxic material. So we needed to study all the methods described in the literature for the production of silver nanoparticles. And basically, we will observe that the chemical and syn the, the physical and chemical methods for the production of silver nanoparticles is not eco-friendly and generate uh, silver nanoparticles with high toxicity, and then avoid né, uh, an in vivo or an in situ applicability for human consumption. However, the biological synthesis of uh, silver nanoparticles, and here we are talking about bioreduction or biosynthesis, né, produces né, uh, through an, an ecological route a nanomaterial uh, without toxicity and without generation uh, of uh, of resilience. And if we have a nanomaterial that is non-toxic, we can apply for food fortification, uh, for the improvement, for the direct contact of this nanomaterial with the food. So for this biosynthesis, now we needed an active compound. And for example, we conducted an experiment using essential oil diluted. We needed to solubilize this essential oil. And in our case, we use exaton. And from the reduction of silver nitrate né, with different concentrations of bioactive compounds under a pH 
previously optimized for this reaction, né, we can produce né, many types of nanoparticles with different concentrations uh, of uh, salt, with different concentrations of active compounds, and then we'll, we will obtain uh, a colloidal suspension of this nanomaterial uh, with different properties. So, this is a, a, a picture uh, that I take uh, before the synthesis and here after the synthesis. Now, the first leaf, visual, the visual appearance of the solutions proved and demonstrate that something happened real, a, a reaction is happened here, and this is the bioreduction reaction. Now, this reaction can be uh, demonstrated, we demonstrated in our papers by many uh, analysis, but uh, the UVVIS analysis is a simple and practical method uh, to prove, to demonstrate that silver nanocarp particles is bioreduced by this bond here demonstrated. In addition, uh, from the physical, in a physical chemical view, we can observe that our nanomaterial products from this, uh, from this road uh, presents a nanoscale uh, with particle size larger than 50 nanometer, which is desirable uh, to a uh, a biological application because particles with low size present more antimicrobial activity and this is affected demonstrated by the literature. Now talking a bit about the nanocomposite, the theory, uh, basically a nanocomposite it's the junction of a nanoparticle with a polymer. So if you have if we have a polymer uh, optimized Come back here. Now, if we have a polymer, a blend optimized, a biodegradable blend functionalized with an ecological nanomaterial, we can produce a nanocomposite for food conservation. And this is the end of our lecture. Uh, so this is a study which, our, which I conducted that we functionalized in, in, in 50, up to 50% of silver nanoparticles, uh, a biodegradable polymer, uh, and then we we will obtain significant difference mainly in the physical chemical characteristics. Uh, to elucidate everything that I say here, uh, I will show some studies which our research group conducted with all of these topics that I mentioned. Uh, and I, I will ex I briefly explain, I will briefly cite to elucidate you know, that it's possible to produce new biodegradable packaging to increase the shelf life of food. So the first study that, uh, that I'm talking here, it's related to the production of biodegradable package. We needed to optimize the production of the biodegradable packaging and for the substitute of synthetic food additives, uh, we needed to functionalize the packaging with antioxidant compounds. And in these studies, we functionalized it with Acas floriana, that is feijoa, a, a Brazilian fruit, with a high content of antioxidant compounds that we previously studied this, the, this fruit. So, uh, in the first moment, we produced our packaging using pinhão starch. Pinhão, it's a, it's a seed here from our region in Brazil uh, with 90% of starch in its composition. So it's a, a valuable source for the production, for the extraction of starch. This starch, we, we produced a blend to improve the mechanical properties. Uh, and this blend was produced with citric pectin and, and glycerol was adding as, as the plastifier and feijoa to promote antioxidant compounds. This is the visual appearance of the, of the film packaging produced uh, and these papers present you know, all the thermal and mechanical properties and we can note that with the production of blend, the mechanical properties, the thermal properties are improved and mainly the antioxidant activity from the control to the functionalized film and then can be proposed a solution. Well, on the other hand, uh, during the processing of this fruit by the industry, uh, a high quantity of residues are generated and, and, this and this residues present a high content of antioxidant compounds. And so we apply it, uh, so in the same blend previously optimized, né, we apply it uh, different concentrations of agroindustrial waste, and call it as feijoapil flour, uh, and we applied the, these wastes in the blend for the improvement of mechanical properties, antioxidant properties, 
uh, but to propose this material as alternative for the conservation of apples in this case. Uh, so the packaging produced present high content of antioxidant compounds and and these antioxidant compounds né, we tested it in the, during the controlled release né, following the instruction established by the Food and Drug Administration and we can observe that the, the active compounds are presented in our in our release solution né, for 30 days which is a desirable time for food application since if you have since if you have a shelf life of uh, 20 days for example for bakery products né, the active compounds né, will be present during all the time and then we will avoid all the reactions all the deterioration reactions for this we apply it all of this packaging né, we, we insist to apply it uh, in the first case to demonstrate that this packaging can improve the shelf life uh, of grapes during the post harvest conservation and then we applied uh, the packaging uh, in ground beef né, to evaluate the lipid content and the decrease of fatty acids né, with, with positive results, with excellent results uh, for storage in, during six months. So the using of bioactive and biodegradable packaging can improve the shelf life uh, in, in three pounds more comparing to the conventional packaging. And finally, we apply the, the same packaging for bread conservation to demonstrate that, that we can improve the shelf life of bread, of, bread, of bakery products, uh, avoiding the, the mold and yeast of this, uh, of this food. This data was not published, but positive results were obtained regarding the in-situ application. So, our conclusion, we can optimize the production of blends. These blends will present better uh, physical chemical properties uh, and, the, and this biodegradable blend can be a solution to substitute the use of synthetic food additives uh, and can be proposed as a solution for the food conservation, increase the shelf life of many products as demonstrated. But we are here to talk about nanotechnology. Né? So, our second study that is related to the production of nanocapsules from phytochemicals. Uh, and, this, and this study future will be applied in a packaging to produce the nanocomposite. So this is the previous study to produce nanocapsules. In our first study, né, we produced an antioxidant and antimicrobial nanoparticle né, using essential oil. So uh, this, this, we use a nanoprecipitation technique for produce nanoparticles and this technique we need an essential oil, uh, a, a polar compound né, which will produce a different type of nanocapsule. This nanocapsule presented excellent antioxidant and antimicrobial, proposed, uh, antimicrobial activity and then né, can be a, a Apply it to, to release these active compounds for the food né, when you are imagining a food application. On the other hand, né, in, in other words, in addition, né, we use the same technique to encapsulate, but now in same nanoparticles to encapsulate two essential oils. Né? We conduct all the experiments and all the optimization of this production, né, mainly related to the production of nanoscale uh, particles. In addition, né? O, o, in addition, we use the same technique, nanoprecipitation technique, to produce uh, different types of nanoparticles with different essential oils, but now we desire an application. So we apply it directly to nanoparticles produced for conservation in bread, with positively results obtained, because as nanoparticles present antioxidant and antimicrobial activity and present active compounds, these compounds will be released during the storage and then will be avoid uh, some deterioration reactions né, which is positive in this case to the conservation uh, of bread. Note that this type of uh, nanoparticle production né, will present uh, nanoparticles with desirable properties which, which is a positive, which is an advantage uh, when, uh, when we are imagining uh, a food conservation with uh, a nanoscape. So the conclusion of this 
of the nanoprecipitation or the production of nanocapsule study uh, is that the nanoparticles present bioactive compounds because we are using an essential oil uh, and we present a great stability on storage because we increase the shelf life and in some cases for 30, 40 days of storage and due the, to the control release of this active compound, uh, these nanoparticles can be used for food conservation. I thought about the silver nanoparticles uh, and silver nanoparticles, it's another group of, uh, of, uh, of nanoparticles, uh, which I previously defined it. Uh, and we studied the production of, of, nano, of silver nanoparticles or meta nanoparticles uh, for the production of nanocomposites, that is our M. So, uh, in our first study, we optimized the production from different pHs to obtain uh, the better, uh, the best pH for the synthesis uh, and, uh, and using uh, the biosynthesis, using an ecological route to produce nanomaterial. This ecological route was favorable, was favorable and uh, in our case, the pH 9 was the best, P, was the best condition uh, to produce uh, a nanomaterial. So, all the characterization of this material was, uh, was elucidated, but it's not the focus here in. In addition, in a, in a, in a paper in a published uh, 15 days ago, we demonstrated the chemical mechanisms uh, to produce, to biosynthesize, and to stabilize the, the, the silver nanoparticles produced by biological uh, role. I will talk more about this study when I talk about nanocomposites because this is a part part of the study which we conducted for the production of nanocomposites. So our conclusion, eh? silver nanoparticles present antimicrobial activity as demonstrated by, by the literature uh, and from the presence of bioactive compounds, now we can use the green synthesis, we can use the bioreduction for the production of these nanomaterials with great stability on storage because we comprobated this, uh, but we needed to applicate, we need a real application in our world. And this real application will be conducted on nanocomposites. So, joining everything that I said, use of biopolymers, use of nano, nanoparticles, nanospheres, and then silver nanoparticles, it's possible to produce nanocomposites. The first study, uh, which I, I will mention here, it's it a study that we produced uh, PEL films, the nanocomposite PEL films, and we functionalize these films with silver nanoparticles synthesized from an ecological, uh, an ecological road. Well, all the characterization of the nanoparticles were conducted, and mainly related to its physical chemical properties, their particle size, polydispersity the index, uh, with low uh, particle sizes obtained from uh, XRD, uh, demonstrated in the um, the crystalline structure of our uh, nanomaterial, and all of this they were attributed to the presence of phytochemicals in our plant extract. So, with the presence of phytochemicals, it's possible, completely possible, to produce silver nanoparticles in an ecological role. In addition, when applying these uh, this silver nanoparticles in a polymer, in a biodegradable polymer, we can produce a bioactive and biodegradable a nanocomposite package, né? and this was demonstrated herein with the functionalization with silver nanoparticles, né? all the properties were improved, né? especially the mechanical properties, the antimicrobial activity of our packaging, because the silver nanoparticle presents antimicrobial activity, and even, uh, and even the thermal, the thermogravimetrical uh, properties of our, uh, of our innovative nanocomposite. And this uh, and all of this uh, is a positive factor for the production of a real packaging because we present good antioxidant, antimicrobial, uh, thermal properties, and then can be produced in the industrial scale and solve all the aforementioned problems. In addition, uh, again, uh, we produce another study with PEL, uh, PEL polymer, uh, but now we, function, we functionalized this uh, we functionalized the, 
this packaging uh, for the production of nanocomposite with zen nanoparticles, né? which we previously uh, which I previously described. So with the functionalization with nanoparticles, né, we can produce again a, a nanocomposite film, and this film presents a real applicability because it improves the shelf life of food né, tested in, in bakery products. In addition, uh, we can apply in a nanocapsule né, an active compound, for example, alpha-tocopherol, né, a compound uh, with high antioxidant activity with many benefits for food conservation. And applying this nanoparticle with our active compounds né, in a biodegradable film, in a biodegradable polymer, né, our nanocomposite will improve all the properties. And in this case, especially mechanical and antioxidant properties due to the activity of our, uh, of our active compound. So, the conclusions of our fourth study is that the nanocomposite can be easily produced for the integrating of two or more technologies. Uh, we obtain nanoscale, so we are producing an innovative nanomaterial, and this material presents a real application for food conservation in our case. So, as I'm talking here to about a perspective, so the perspective is that we dominate, we know the lab production of all of these materials. We have, we present real application for food conservation. It's a promising material. However, the industrial production of this process, the, the scale up of this process, it's not completely elucidated because we don't know the economic viability of this process. And we don't know if the industry will apply, né? mainly due to this economic viability. So these are some next studies which we will conduct uh, to solve all the problems and then to propose a solution uh, for the real implementation. So uh, optimized material with excellent properties that improve the shelf life of food and uh, economic viable material. That's really important in a scale up process. So uh, this is what uh, I would like to talk. Uh, thank you very much for your attention and if anyone